Notebook found in a deserted house. Robert Block, originally published in Word Tales in May. First off, I want to write you. I want to write that I never did anything wrong. Not to nobody. They've got no call to shut me up here, whoever they are. They got no reason to do what I'm afraid they're going to do either. I think they're coming pretty soon because they've been gone outside a long time, digging, I guess, in that old well, looking for a gate, I heard. Not a regular gate, of course, but something else. Got a notion what they mean, and I'm not scared. I'll look out the windows, because of course, I'd look out the windows, but of course, they're boarded up, so I can't see. But I turned on the lamp and found this here notebook, so I want to put it all down. Then if I get the chance, maybe I can send it to somebody who can help me. Or maybe somebody will, will find it. Anyways, it's better to write it out as best as I can instead of just sitting here and waiting. Waiting for them to come and get me. I better start by telling my name, which is Willie Osborne, and that I am 12 years old last July. I don't know where I was born. First thing I can remember is living out Roots Ford Way, out in what folks call the Back Hill Country. It's a real lonesome out there, with the deep woods all around, and lots of mountains and hills that nobody ever climbs. Grandma used to tell me about it when I was just a little shaver. That's who I lived with, just Grandma, on account of my real folks being dead. Grandma was the one who taught me how to read and write. I'd never been to a regular school. Grandma knew all kinds of things about the hills and the woods, and she told me some mighty queer stories. That's what I thought they was anyway. When I was little and living all alone with her, just stories like the ones in books. Well, in one way or another, sometimes the stories speak of something, or they speak to something. Stories about them ones hiding in the swamps. That was here before the settlers and the Indians both, and how there were circles in swamps and big stones called altars where them ones used to make sacrifices to what they worshipped. Grandma got some of the stories from her grandma, she said, about how them ones hid in the woods and swamps because they couldn't stand sunshine and how the Indians kept out of their way, she said. Sometimes the Indians would leave some other young people tied to the trees in the forest as a sacrifice so as to keep them contented and peaceful. The Indians knew all about them and they tried to keep white folks from noticing too much or settling too close to the hills. Them ones didn't cause much trouble, but they might if they was crowded. So the Indians give excuses for not settling, saying there weren't enough hunting and no trails, and it was too far off from the coast. You know, because of fish, right? Grandma told me that was why not many places was settled, even today. Nothing but a few farmhouses here and there. She told me them, once, was still alive. And sometimes on certain nights, in the spring and fall, you could see lights and hear noises far off on the tops of the hills. Grandma said, I had an Aunt Lucy and an Uncle Fred who lived out there, right smack in the middle of the hills. Said my pa used to visit them before he got married, and once he heard them beating on a tree drum one night along about Halloween time, that was before he met Ma. And they got married, and she died when I come, and he went away. I heard all kinds of stories about witches and devils and batmen that sucked your blood and haunts. 
about Salem and Arkpan because I'd never been to a city and wanted to hear tell how they were about a place called Innsmouth with old rotten houses where people hid awful things away in the cellars and the attics. She told me about the way graves was dug deep under Arkham, made it sound like the whole country was full of haunts. She used to scare me, telling me about how some of these things looked and all, but she never would tell me how them ones looked, no matter how much I asked. Said she didn't want me to have any truck with such things. Bad enough, she and her kin knew as much as they did, almost too much for decent God-fearing people. It was lucky for me I didn't have to bother with such ideas, like my own ancestor on my father's side, Mehetabel Osborne, who got hanged for a witch back in the Salem days. Now, if all you're doing is worshipping differently than other people, there should be never any allowance for any punishment by society. So they was just stories to me, until last year when Grandma died and Judge Krubenthorpe put me on the train, and I went out to live with Aunt Lucy and Uncle Fred in the very same hills that Grandma used to tell them, uh, tell me about so often. You can bet I was pretty excited, and the conductor let me ride with him all the way and told me about the towns and everything. Uncle Fred met me at the station. He was tall, a tall and thin man with a long beard. We drove off in a bucky from the little depot. No houses around, there or nothing, right into the woods. Funny thing about those woods, they was so still and quiet, gave me the creeps. They was so dark and lonesome, seemed like nobody had ever shouted or laughed or even smiled at them. Couldn't imagine anyone saying anything there except in whispers. Trees and all was so old, too. No animals around or birds. Path kind of overgrown like nobody used it much ever. Uncle Fred drove along right. He didn't hardly talk to me at all, but just made that old horse hump it. Um. What? <laughs> but... Pretty soon, we struck into some hills. There was... <laughs> Sorry. They was awfully high ones. There was woods on them, too. And sometimes a brook came running down. But I didn't see no houses, and it was always dark. Like at twilight. Wherever you looked. Lastly, we got to the farmhouse. A little place. Old frame house and barn and a clear space and trees all around. Kind of gloomy-like. Aunt Lucy came up to meet us. She was a nice sort of a little middle-aged lady who hugged me and took my stuff in back. But all this don't hold with what I'm supposed to write down here. It don't matter that all this last year I was living in the house here with them, eating off the stuff Uncle Fred farmed without ever going into town. No other farms around here were almost four mile, and no school, so evenings, Aunt Lucy would help me with my reading. I never played much. At first, I was scared of going into the woods on account of what Grandma had told me. Besides, I could tell as Aunt Lucy and Uncle Fred was scared of something, from the way they locked the doors at night and never went into the woods after dark, even in the summer. But, after a while, I got used to the idea of living in the woods and they didn't seem so scary. I did chores for Uncle Fred, of course, but sometimes in the afternoons, when he was busy, I'd go off by myself, particular by the time it was fall. And that's how I heard one of the things. It was early October. I was in the glen right by the big boulder. Then the noise started. I got behind that rock fast. 
You see, like I say, there isn't any animals in the woods. There are people except perhaps old Cap Pritchett and the mailman, uh, the mailman who only comes through on Thursday afternoons. When I heard a sound that wasn't Uncle Fred or Aunt Lucy calling to me, I knew I'd better hide. About that sound, it was far away at first. Kind of a dropping noise. Sounded like blood falling in, a, in little spurts on the bottoms of the bucket when Uncle Fred hung up a butchered hog.